Now my goal is to get a hacks lunchbox. Oh, don't you dare. That was a lesson. No, no, uh, no devil's lettuce before we hit the stodge. Yeah, I tried to throw some stuff at you that hopefully you hadn't heard 10,000 times. So I truly no, right. you did. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful God day. God bless you for Thank that. You. <laughs> Going, we don't need uh, Ms. Smart, Ms. Einbinder, I'm a massive fan. I love the show. So seriously, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, this might be a ridiculous question, but I'm really curious when it comes to being funny, I'm curious like how close the audience is to you affects how you land a joke. Like Hannah, you did stand up for years and, and Gene, I know you performed in front of a live studio audience for years and, and the audience was right there. And with Hacks, you're delivering jokes for an audience six months away sitting in their living room. And, and so this might sound crazy, but does the location of the audience affect humor at all? I will say that it was a difficult adjustment for me when I started acting coming from stand up to know that we were recording sound. So everybody in the room had to not laugh, but we can hear a faint giggle from where from the video, from village. video village where paul jen and lucia Which is the, always very satisfying yeah creators of the shows no, but it is a different it is a different animal uh, but i because i remember because i'd only done theater when i first came here and started doing television i remember one day <clears throat> i was doing a scene and something i don't remember and i sort of paused after a line and the director said can you close up that pause and i said i said i'm holding for the laugh and she cracked up and she i said oh, well i'm i'm kind of serious because the people at home are hopefully laughing <laughs> because how many times have you watched a movie or a TV show and it gets annoying that you can't ever, you miss half the lines because they just keep going. They don't hold for laughs. But at the same time, if they do, it might be interminable. I don't know. I know it's a different reason, but some of your long pauses in this show, I think, are some of the best moments <laughs> whenever, uh, you know, oh, when, my whenever reactions Ava reactions to her. Yes. Usually, yeah. The long pauses. Um, I have to be honest, before I started season three, I had written down a question to ask you guys, which is when are we going to see a Deborah Vance slot machine in Vegas? And that <laughs> question was answered in the opening scene of oh this season. God, so and tired. there's an entire great plot line about uh, Deborah Vance merchandise, uh, which I which yielded a question for me, Miss Smart, over your amazing career, what is the strangest merchandise you've ever seen with your face on it? When we were doing Designing Women, there were... Because I'd always said as an actor cause I, that if I ever ended up on a lunchbox, I'd kill myself. Um, <laughs> but when we did Designing Women, they put us on picture frames and greeting cards. But of course, we didn't see one red cent. Now my goal is to get a Hacks lunchbox. No, oh, don't you dare. That's <laughs> licensed <laughs> or not. Just don't tell HBO. <laughs> That is my goal. Um, you know, one of the big themes through season two into this new season that I thought was interesting is that I think sometimes you have to bomb and then you learn something from that failure and that's how you grow. I'm curious for each of you, what is the most valuable bomb of your career where maybe it was terrible when it happened, but there genuinely was a lesson to be learned somewhere in there? If, if I have one, I have blocked it out because I don't, I don't like to learn lessons that way. <laughs> I avoid things like that at all costs. Um, yeah, I, kind of thing. I will say just for stand up, like early on when I first started touring, I went on like a very DIY tour through Portland and I did one show with at the end of the tour, like they had all gone well. And then I, we did one show in, um, in Vancouver, Washington, which is just like a deep red state, like small town saloon. We were like doing a show at a saloon and I thought I could smoke pot before the show. And I... <laughs> spiraled um in a way that was hor a true panic attack on stage and that was a that was a lesson no no uh no devil's lettuce before we hit the stage for baby so never again never again did i i yeah i actually did that with rum punch before a show but i i wasn't a drinker then at all and my friend was making me lunch and he had made this pink pretty punch just tasted like lemonade and I was playing the lead in this play and I got there and all of a sudden I thought oh my god I don't remember my the mo opening monologue and my my lip was kind of stuck out like that and, I, and, it was, and the rest of the cast had to bail me out for the next two hours Brutal. That, that was that was a terrifying lesson yeah. there are lessons in there yeah 
Um, the smart, I have to be honest with you. One of my favorite movie monologues of all time. I'm a massive movie nerd. Um, is your scene with Brad Pitt in Babylon? I think is genuinely oh. one of my favorite scenes mm. ever put to film. And mm. since I think to some degree, Deborah Vance is worried about her legacy, or she, at least she thinks about it. What do you think Eleanor would say about Deborah Vance, or, or maybe even to Deborah Vance about about her legacy? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of that. I can't remember that monologue. I know it was such a great speech. I was terrified they'd cut some of it, and they didn't. Um, I think she'd probably, uh, I mean, I think she'd probably give her some of the same advice she gave to Brad's character in that, you know, you have your time and then it's somebody else's time. And why are you making a big thing out of that? It's what, mm. like, she, like at first she's almost annoyed with him for not accepting that. And then, and then she gets very sympathetic, but, um, it's like, what, what, you know, everyone has their time and then their time is over and yours is over. So, you know. I love that. Um, one of, I think, the best aspects of this show is watching how these two characters make each other better. They help each other grow, uh, which we've seen now a lot over the course of three seasons. What is your favorite thing about your performance, about your role, that is the result of the person sitting next to you? Well, I think the emotional scenes are that much more vivid and real for me because the stakes feel high when I'm, you know, having to get into that moment and I'm looking at you, you know. No, I just, I, I love, I love how they bounce off each other. I mean, it's just so much fun. It's that cliche of you're playing tennis with somebody, you know, and it's true. I mean, it's just someone who has the same sense of humor, someone who's quick. Um, I mean, that's how I felt about her when I met her. And that's how Deborah felt when she met her, even though she found her incredibly annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's just a, a joy working with her and going to work. I mean, it's just, you know, like I said, it's, and then Deborah says it. She says, when you find someone that you share a sense of humor with, it's like you have your own secret language, you know? And that is, that is a thing that it either happens or it doesn't. It's just what they call chemistry, you know? Well, I've got to tell you, they're, they're pulling me out of here. Um, more so than any characters I've seen in a long time, I just want to hang out with Deborah and Ava just because I feel like it would be a good time. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time. I know you have a super busy day. I try to throw some stuff at you that hopefully you hadn't heard 10,000 times. So I truly no, appreciate right. you did. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful God day. bless you for thank that. You. Bye, guys. See you Bye, later. Chicago. Love Bye. Chicago. We love you. Thank you. The Bears. Yeah. Let's go to Bears. Thanks, guys. <laughs>